Um, hello, my name is Leila Liebertrau. Uh, I am South African, uh, living and working in Nairobi, Kenya. So, four years ago in Kenya, um, an idea was born. Um, the idea was to build a food rights movement that would encourage people to critically question uh, recurring hunger crises and chronic food insecurity in the country. Why is it that almost 50 years, or more than 50, sorry, more than 50 years after independence, and despite many political promises, are millions of Kenyans on a daily basis not able to access sufficient quantities of adequate food? So the movement came to be known as the Root to Food Initiative. It is an alliance of over 600 members whose mandate is to highlight that every individual has a right to food that is protected by the Kenyan constitution um, and, that, and the many international conventions that Kenya is state party to. Because you see, hunger is not a problem of food production. There is enough food in Kenya. It is, it is rather, rather it is a question of access can each individual afford to buy food, and is that food equitably distributed? Through the creative communications of the Root to Food initiative, we emphasize that the right to food is not the right to be fed, but rather the right to feed oneself in dignity. Despite this, successive regimes have failed to, have failed to make meaningful political commitments to ending chronic food insecurity. Irregular weather patterns, pest invasion, over-dependence on rain-fed agriculture, um, climate change, and lack of modern technology and science are often used as the only scapegoats for the hunger problems facing the country. There are many entry points to a conversation about food rights. Amongst other things, one can talk about farming practices, but also diet diversity and nutrition, uh, food safety, value addition, fair wage and work environments, consumer rights, policy and legislation in various sectors, and protection of biodiversity and natural resources. In the course of our work at the initiative, we are tackling themes of pesticide registration and use, GMOs, gender democracy in the food system, budget allocations to agriculture, and legislation that supports the right to save food. We advocate or emphasize agroecology as the alternative to industrial farming systems, and we do as much as we can to educate the public, young and old, rural and urban dwellers, farmers and corporates, about making choices that support local, smallholder, and organic food production. We recently published a white paper on pesticide use in Kenya, showing that there are at least 662 products that are, have chronic human health effects and negative environmental impacts. These products are causing cancer, they affect reproductive systems, and they affect nervous systems. It was shocking to find out that of the 230 active ingredients registered for use in Kenya, 33% are withdrawn from the European market. So this uh, report was picked up by a member of parliament who has tabled a petition in the Kenya National Assembly calling for the immediate withdrawal of these active ingredients from the local market. We have since presented on several occasions to the National Committee of Health um, and are waiting on the final committee's, uh, or the, the committee's final report and recommendations um, on the basis of which parliament will vote on whether to adopt the recommendations and we are hoping for a favorable outcome in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so since 2013, Kenya has had a ban on genetically modified food imports. Despite this, or perhaps because of it, there is a significant lack of understanding about GMO technology or what GMOs are amongst the Kenyan public. Um, we, um, and in particular, sorry, the socioeconomic and environmental effects of this form of agriculture. So in the past year, um, in the past year, the government has indicated its desire to lift the ban. Um, and in line with this worrying trend, last month, the Kenya cabinet approved the commercialization of BT cotton. So I'm going to move a little bit fast because this is going a lot quicker than I thought. Um, so uh, the publication of the Root to Food Initiative is called Chakula. There are copies available outside. It looks like this. It's awesome. Um, and this is really a space and a platform for creative communications, uh, political commentary, dissenting views uh, on food rights in the country. Uh, one of the articles that we had published 
uh, in previous year's edition uh, by Brenda Wanbui is called Biting the Hand That Feeds Us. And this is really about the role that women play in Kenya um, uh, in food production and food systems. Um, and she really argues that uh, women are being socially, politically, and economically excluded because of their gender. Just two seconds, then I came all the way from Kenya. Okay, so... <laughs> Skip a couple, um, so please grab a publication. Uh, you're welcome to get in touch with us. We're online 24-7, uh, so you can follow or engage with us online on this hashtag. Um, and if you have any ideas uh, that you think can help us grow and learn, you're welcome to get in touch with us uh, on any one of these email addresses. Asentini Sana. Thank you. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much, Leila.